In this tutorial I'm going to take you through how we can convert this color image to a black and white image inside Lightroom 3. As you can see it's a typical image taken on holidays. This was taken in Croatia last year and uh, it's got a nice tonal range within it. And we're going to work with this to create a more interesting black and white composition. We'll probably clone out some bits and pieces and we'll take a look at various different features within inside Lightroom to actually make these changes. One of the first things that I tend to do is go and check for any lens correction problems that I need to rectify. So if we switch to the lens correction panel, enable the, pro the profile corrections, and as you can see it's picked up the fact that I was using a Sigma 18-200 to lens when I shot this, and we can turn it on and off and we can see the difference. Very, very minimal. You'll probably find there's a little bit of darkening in the corner, possibly a little sort of barrel distortion, but that's pretty much it with this particular shot. You will find, if you use this feature, that you may find that there's slightly more extreme changes depending upon the lens combination that you're using. Okay, we're ready to start working with the image now on the black and white conversion process. The reason I chose this particular image is because if you take a look at the sky, we've got some lovely clouds there. Even though they don't stand out that well at the moment, we can enhance that through the various options that we have within the color panel. Then we'll convert it to black and white and we'll take a look at what we can do to actually give it some real punch and, and vibrancy. There's a couple of things that you may want to take out in a shot like this. Unfortunately, the foreground is a little bit busy, and these boys, they're kind of showing up a little bit. So what we might end up doing is actually cloning those out. But for now, we won't worry too much about that. Although I will crop in to remove this distracting boat, the little jetty and so on in the foreground. So just use the crop tool. As you can see, I've already corrected this image a little bit. So let's just crop in a little bit tighter to get rid of the distracting elements that I don't want. Pull this up slightly. Okay, I'm happy with that. Click close, and we're done. And that's removed the distracted element. Now you can see we've got this uh, this boy in the foreground with there. Let's just choose the uh, the healing brush, and we'll just enlarge that just by using the left hand bracket. We'll click, and we'll try choosing point somewhere further away. It's not particularly brilliant because it's so close to the edge of the image. There we go, that should do. While we're at it, we'll take these other ones out as well. So I'll just increase my brush slightly. Click. Choose a reference point that I'm happy with. That'll do. And we'll take some of these other distracted elements out a little bit further back as well. Might as well make the effort while we're actually in this palette. And all I'm doing is clicking to choose the part that I want to clone out, and then the second lighter circle is my reference point. So just keep doing this, finding reference points that work well within the image itself. And we'll get rid of a couple more of these. Take these couple out. Now obviously if you're working on this, you're going to find that you'll take more time ensuring you end up with the best results possible, but obviously I'm doing this quite quickly for the video. Okay, that'll do. So we click on close. There's all our distracted elements removed from the image. Okay, let's zoom back out to see the full image. Okay, we've got a better better image now. We've got a few more bits and pieces over in the left hand side we could take out, but for brevity I'll leave that as it is. And when you're working with a black and white image, we're generally working with the two hundred and fifty six grey tones that we've got within that image, the grayscale image. The beauty of working with a RAW file is the fact that we can still influence the shades and the tone and the contrast within the image, not just by using the clarity, the contrast and the brightness, we can influence it by using the actual HSL and color sliders within the actual um, image itself, because we're working with the underlying colors that we can edit those with the black and white placed on top of it. You'll see what I mean as we work through the video. So let's just give this a little bit of a boost, a bit of a kick. First of all, let's try and increase the clarity. That should give us some better contrast with the clouds. Let's try increasing that. We should find the clouds will start to get a real punch. If I pull the history palette up, I can show you what I mean. There's before. There's that. As you can see, the clouds really do start to sort of punch up a little bit. Let's just close this panel down. So that's given us a bit more punch within the sky the vibrance up a little bit. Now we've got 
quite dark areas within this tree line. Don't mind so much about this overlapping tree because that's going to be pretty much shadowed anyway. What we can try doing is increasing so the fill light. And that'll bring a little bit of lightness into the, the shot itself. Now we can counteract various parts of that by increasing the contrast. Not too far. But as you can see, the tone within our clouds now is starting to really start to punch up. If we now switch over to the tone curve, and we can start enhancing even more. So if we take the highlights, you can see the sky starts to really lighten up. If we take the lights down slightly, that's really starting to give us a nice tone within those, those clouds within the sky. And we'll reduce the dark slightly, but we'll take up the shadows because we don't want to end up with all this area too dark. Now, obviously, we can go back in later on, and we can we can use the uh, the paintbrush to actually change a lot of that. And if we find we get too dark in there, we can actually bring a lot of that back. The other thing that you got to remember when you're working with Lightroom, and if you're working with the RAW editor inside Photoshop, is that all of this is non-destructible. It's all kept within the XMP sidecar so we can go back in at any point and re-edit any of this that doesn't work for us. Okay, so I'm fairly happy now with the way this image is, is starting to come along but we're still working with the black and white image so let's just flick over to the black and white option and see what we're working with. Now as you can see it's probably gone a little bit flat now because we've we've taken the colour out it looks like a different image, so we need to sort of get some of that that detail back within the image itself. Okay, so let's take a look at the next stage now. Let's actually enhance this sky even more so and give it some real drama. Now, what we could do, we could use the adjustment brush. We could switch over and we could actually work with adjusting the white balance on it. in the white balance. We could burn it. We could dodge the sky. We could do various different things, but in all honesty it's a little bit long-winded, time-consuming, and you don't get the best effect. So what we are going to do is we're going to take a look at using the graduated filter to bring some real drama into this sky. So I'm going to do is click, select that, just choose exposure, and we're going to go from right the midpoint of the, the clouds and drag that over until we've got just below the cloud line. Now what we can do is we can use these particular adjustment sliders just to affect that gradient. So we can first of all start by increasing the clarity, boost the contrast, adjust the lightness. Don't want to go too far with that because it can be quite an intense effect. And we could adjust the exposure. We could take it down quite dark, give it some real drama. I don't want to go too far with that though, because we tend to find that we're going to get a halo effect around this tree in the top. So let's just say we're, we're happy with that. Click on close. Let's put up the before and after. Is the before. Once we have the graduated filter, is the after. So we've got a bit more drama in that sky. Now we might find that when we've made alterations like that, we might want to adjust our tone curve slightly, just to bring back a bit of punch to the image. And finally what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch down to the effects palette, and just to draw attention to the centre of the image, we're going to add a slight vignette to the picture. I don't want to go too far. Maybe just the midpoint. Just so we get what we're looking for and we're happy with. I come back up the tone curve and I'm just going to bring up so the lighter areas. And finally, where we've got this area that's darker now in the bottom right hand corner switch back to the adjustment brush. Exposure, we can work with that. I'm going to just reduce my brush slightly. I'm going to paint into this darker area. Not too much. I'm just going to adjust my exposure. 
just to bring back some of the detail that we've kind of lost within that portion of the image. Okay, that's pretty good. And we just click on close on that. Okay, so we've taken a pretty bland color photograph. We've enhanced the color information. We've converted it over to black and white. And then we've given the sky some real punch. I hope this has been a useful video. And I'd love to see or hear any feedback from you on the WC2K forums or on our Facebook page.